Here we go. I'm good right here. It's not this type of show. Minnetonka High School in the house today, everybody. That's right. I love Minnetonka. We get a visit from them a couple times a year. I love them. They have a great theater program. I believe this is journalism, uh, uh, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, keep some of that clapping going from a good friend, Kendall. Hello, Kendall. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I'm good. It's Friday. I know. It's Friday. We have such a good show coming up. Don't turn the channel. If you want to watch something, just record the other stuff. Stay right here because uh, Kendall's mom is going to be here live helping us with a hot dish. Uh-huh. Uh, and then we're going to play a game called How Well Do You Know Your Kid? Uh, so we're going to ask... We're going to ask your mother, and then my mom's going to join us via the phone because she lives in Louisiana, and to see they're like newlywed game type questions. Mm -hmm. How well? Oh, by the way, yeah. Here's my mom. Uh, this was uh, oh, fun. I took her to Walt Disney World a couple a couple of years ago, and there we are Aww. doing our our favorite pastime: cocktailing, <laughs> cocktailing. Yeah. Uh, and then oh, and this is literally her favorite hamburger ever in the world at Walt Disney World. But anyway, so Dar's coming up. In a, in a little bit. Uh, how well do you think your mom's going to do with this game? Um, she was really nervous about it. She's like, what if I don't know? And it's like something weird. There's my mom with me and my sisters. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. How my cute. sister's going to kill me for putting that photo up there. Oh, look. And there we are again. Mom, I love the 90s cut. It looks yeah, loving, good. loving. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the 90s right oh, up in and there. This was in New York City. I was on a billboard in Times Square. For like two weeks once. You were? Yeah, so my mom and I went out for 24 hours to see the billboard. Why were was... you, do you mind, were you a criminal or why were you out? Why yeah, were, yeah, I was wanted. Yeah. Um, no, it was for a company I used to work for. They did a big advertising promo over there and so it was me like talking to people. That Dunn is Square. cool. Oh okay, yeah, there's photos. Me and my mom were like, I, we you have see to that. go. You gotta bring that in. Oh yeah. It was, it was so fun, but when we went, one of the screens was like blacked out, so like half of my face is not there. Oh, kind well. Of, how, I mean, that, that's how it always happens, that's how, right? You're, the once in a lifetime you're going to be on a billboard in Times Square and the LED screen is out. Yeah, yeah of course. So. You got to bring in a picture. I want to see that. Okay. I want to see that. Okay. We have that coming up. Uh, plus, you know, my favorite, I say, I, I mean this too, they're one of my favorite guests we've ever ha had on the show because nothing drives me crazy. Well, no, there's a lot of things driving me crazy. But one of the things that drive me crazy is when a guest doesn't come to play. You know, we're mm -hmm. a light show. We're here to have fun. Yam House is my favorite local band, and they're out with a brand new song that dropped while we were sleeping, and you're going to hear it here uh, in a few minutes. It's all about lead singer Lars. It's He wrote it for his mom, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful song. Sweet. So, yeah. Plus, there's a lot of new... Yeah, there's a lot of new music out today. I mean, while we were... Ed Sheeran and Justin uh, Bieber released a song. Yeah, Carly Rae Jepsen. You're going to hear all that a little bit later. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for La Hot Dish. Here we go. <laughs> almost, almost, knocked <laughs> almost, almost knocked down La Microphone. Anyway, first up, uh, Whoopi Goldberg was on Andy Cohen last night and was asked about uh, Ladies Who Punch. Remember, that's the tell-all book about The View. Watch Whoopi's response. Have you read The Ladies Who Punch and what was your reaction to what Rosie said about you? Have you read the book about The View? No. No. And any, did you hear about the talk about the book? No. You know, listen, I, <laughs> I didn't talk to the guy. I didn't care about the book. You didn't? No. Right. Why didn't you talk to him? Because what happens for me at work is not for everybody it's not their business. Uh-huh. You know, and I don't like talking out of school and I don't like other people talking out of school. So for me, you know, you just have to 
Leave it there. Leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for me, that's for me. I don't know about anybody else. Right. Rosie had some strong words about you. Is it, is it? Uh, that's okay. Right. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, yeah. In case you missed it, Rosie O'Donnell said Whoopi was really mean to her and interacting with Whoopi was, quote, the worst experience she's ever had on live TV. Oh. Wow. I don't care, you know, and that's probably true. I, I, it, it is very hard. You know, I've never, luckily, I've never been in a situation where I didn't get along with someone that I was on TV with. I mean, you have bad days and you have fights. And, uh, you know, on the radio show, Lex and I always joke, there are days when we are irritated with each other. I mean, you know, uh, but you, you got to just push through. But what, uh, Rosie was telling all, but I agree with Whoopi, though. You, mm -hmm. don't, you don't talk about that stuff. No, she's like, Whoopi to me is just like, insert crown. Yes, yeah. queen. Yeah. You know why? Yes. Because, again, I wouldn't want that done to me. So no. I wouldn't leave and write a book like, you know, Kendall was really like this. And you know what I mean? I wouldn't do yeah, that to you. She, and, right. She and, needs more deodorant. I don't know. Oh, no, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a private joke, but now you're in on our private joke about, yeah. <laughs> Right, Kendall? That's right. You said it. You can't get mad I at know, me. No, no, I'm Your mom's right don't. there. Anyway. Mom. Next in the dish, the entire cast of HBO's Veep uh, visited Colbert last night. Uh, I can't believe I'm going to say this because Sunday is the series finale of Veep. I love the show. This is one of the best shows on television. Julia Louis-Dreyf has talked about what the show is about and how it has become so successful. This is a show that is a satire of the culture of politics. Okay. And um, it is without um, party. I mean, party, that is to say, is not identified. There's just us and them, which I think is useful because then no matter what party in, you are in, you might get a kick out of it. You and, work really hard, so we can't figure out what party people are. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, you cannot. And as a result of that fact, we've had people on both sides of the aisle, and I mean extreme sides of the aisle, really dig this show and tell us how much they like how we're making fun of the other side. <laughs> Which is very yeah, cool. and that's cool. <laughs> that's... That's another really smart thing about the show. They don't refer to each, they don't refer to Republicans or Democrats. It's just one side and the other. Selena is one of the best characters ever created for a woman on television. Yeah, the character who plays the character who plays Jonah Ryan, Tim Simons, talked about how the cast met with real Washington staffers to gain a better understanding of how politicians in D.C. really work. Look at this. It was like like the like the the wide-eyed sort of like the. Uh, the, the going to Washington, like, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to change America for the better. And we would sit down with people and, like, take staffers out for drinks. And one of them, like, after the third drink was like, you know what my job is? My job isn't even to get my congressperson's ideas out there. My job is to up my rival's day. That's what I do. That's all I have to do is keep them from getting their message out. And I was like, oh, this is awful. <laughs> yeah, never. Yeah, the D.C., I, I love it. I love visiting it. But I would never, ever, ever want to live in D.C. I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think I would. It's just, it's all, yeah. It's like, I, I talk to people. It's like, you have to be to be invited to anything. You got to be somebody. It's just very exclusive. I, I would not do well in that environment. No, thank you. No. I just don't like all the meanness. No. Like, mm. I don't either, yeah. I just, I can't do that. This is the seventh and final season of Veep. The finale airs Sunday on HBO. If you need to catch up. Uh, all the seasons are available on HBO Go. If you're looking for a binge, uh, this is one of them. Next in the dish, from TV to movies, whew, the trailer. I know. Floor director Evan? Oh, I know. Floor, uh, it, chapter two. The trailer dropped yesterday. Oh. It's just such a good trailer. Look at this. Won't you come in? It's the least I can do. Is it like you remember? Cleaner. Well, you feel free to look around while I get the water boiling. Your hair is winter fire. January embers. My heart burns that too. There you go. Thank you. Now some music. I do apologize. It gets so very hot here this time of year. It's fine. Well, you feel like you could just about die. <laughs> but you know what they say about Derry? Hmm. 
No one who dies here ever really dies. Oh, well, no. And if you keep, and if you keep going, make sure you watch this full video. Look at her. Look at her fro frozen face. That is horrifying. And then she kind of she kind of scampers off. And then you realize in this trailer that she is well in air quotes. She's Pennywise. She's Pennywise's daughter. Uh, yeah, it is hor This trailer is so so good. It's uh, it, it chapter two is based off the Stephen King novel, and already Stephen King gave the movie high praise. It takes place 27 years after the original. The film stars Jessica Chastain and James McAvoy, and uh, Bill Hader as well from Saturday Night Live. Now, because I, if I if I remember correctly, because I read this one in Pet Cemetery, both of these stories are in the same book, right? Anybody else read? I think. They, the, the childhood portion of the story and then the adult portion was in one book, but what the movie studio decided to do was to separate it. Did you read this? You know I didn't read that. I know, I decided it was a... <laughs> I'm sitting over here like in tears. I was terrifying looking. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm hearing from our research team. That's Stephanie Hansen. It's two books? <laughs> really? Yeah. I, like I think you're wrong, but I don't oh, know. I mean, yeah, oh, I don't know. Well, Somebody... Well... Oh, audience, we're friends. I can do that to her. The audience is like, wow, Jason's getting sassy with a random woman over there. No, it's Hanson. We, we get sassy with each other. Hanson, can you Google that right now? I think it's one book, actually. Are we actually Googling that right now? Well, yeah, that's what Hanson's doing over there. I don't want to lead the people wrong. And, oh. But you know what's happening right now? And this is what I love. I think about this on the radio show, too, when people can't think of something and people scream at the radio. People that have read it, they're screaming at the TV right now because oh, totally. they know the answer. It's yeah. like when you watch Wheel of Fortune and you know the puzzle and right. the person standing there doesn't. Anyway, this is taking a long time. Is it? <laughs> what, what, do we have Pilgrim Mom, Internet do in you here? Know? I, I, I it's one. Mom says it's one book. Mom says it's one book. She's I'm, a librarian. I don't know. Oh, she's a li- Well, why the hell did we go to her? <laughs> Stephanie just goes to restaurants. We should have gone to the librarian. It, chapter two, hits theaters in September, everybody. Whether it's one book or not, yeah. Yeah, the meatloaf. Yeah. Uh, I hope people are still watching at this point. That's right. We have a great show. Go get another cup of coffee. We'll be back right after these words. Coming up. We are celebrating mom today. Kendall's mom is here to lend a hand with Hot Dish, and then a little later, my mom will join us via her magic phone to play a round of How Well Do You Know Your Kid? Procrastinate a little bit uh, concerning Mother's Day plans? Well, don't worry. Our foodie queen, Stephanie Hansen, is here with great last minute ideas. And then they are my favorite local band and one of my favorite guests of all time on The Jason Show, Yam House dropped a new song last night all about mom. You'll hear it just ahead. I don't know if people know this about you, that you have a law degree yeah. from the most prestigious school in Australia. Here's a photo from your graduation. You were acting at this point. Yeah. Did anybody, were people saying, why don't you just drop out of this? Yes. Really, your career is going this way. Um, because, yeah, like, um, law degree is like five years um, total. Yeah. Which, uh, combined law degree. Um, and I was already on Australian television by, like, year two. Right. And they were like, what is she? And also because I play a lot of dumb characters. So people were very confused <laughs> yeah. about what I was doing in, like, the contract law exam. And I'd also, like, rock up in, like, a gangster tracksuit just to, like, <laughs> mind mess with everybody. Yeah. And, um... But, yeah, but I, like, it took me so long to get into law school. Like, you had to study really hard. So I thought I may as well finish it, even though I was already kind of famous. <laughs> Good for her. Rebel Wilson with Corden last night talking about law school. Her movie, The Hustle with Anne Hathaway right there, is in theaters today. Ladies and gentlemen, helping us out with the hot dish, please welcome Kendall's mom, Sid, over there. Hi, Sid. Hi, Mom. Good night. 
Can I call you mom? I feel weird calling you Sid. Yes, please. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I do. I just like. Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ma. Next, uh, ma. Ne next <laughs> in the be better. next next in the dish. Now this is sad, but not. It, but it is sad. But it we're gonna laugh a little bit. Sad news to report. Uh, if you're around my generation or older, about a late night staple, Jim Fowler, the longtime co-host of Wild Kingdom, has passed away. He was known, yeah, he was known for swimming through uh, snake-infested waters, diving with sharks, uh, rappelling off cliffs uh, while his partner just watched. And he was also known for <laughs> many of us that loved late night TV. He uh, went toe to toe with Johnny Carson, always bringing hysterical animals in some of the best Tonight Show clips ever. Here's a look at one of them. Just say you're going to take it away from him. I'd okay. like the banana. Just tell him you want the banana. I want the banana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want it. Doc, give me the banana. <laughs> give it here. Give it here. Come on. Give me the banana. Give me the banana. Me the banana. <laughs> this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is called Doc. Doc, come here. It's called Doc. Come on. Oh. Hey, Boy, Doc, he's frisky, just a minute here. Come on. Here's your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Doc. Right. You'll set this chair on. Please. Man and his monkey. You'll set this chair on. Doc, Doc, on your chair. On your chair. I was I was in the office with producer Ted and I could watch these clips all day long. This is Johnny was so I mean he was really at he was great at interviews but he really was at his best uh, I think other other than the monologue obviously when he was with animals. Jim Fowler hosted Wild Kingdom for more than 20 years. He was 89 years old. And a little fun a little fun fact about it was called Mutual of Omaha's. Remember Aaron Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Wild Kingdom for many years was shot in the same studio that Oprah bought. Uh, it was, it was a, yeah, it was a morgue. Then it was home to Wild Kingdom. Yeah, seriously. Harpo was a morgue. Then it was Wild Kingdom. And then it was the Oprah Winfrey show. Yeah, it was, yeah. Mom, do you remember? Mm -hmm. I do. Do you remember Jim Fowler? Yeah. I do. I remember watching Wild Kingdom. Yeah. And Marlon Perkins would stand along the side and be like, you go, Jim. Jim is having a little trouble with the crocodile. That's right. You know, he'd be just and Marlon under was the water. And Marlon wouldn't do anything. No. He was like, oh, Jim, we'll get back to He's you if, the, if you're alive at the end of the segment. Yeah, anyway, it was, it was good. If you want to see funny. any of those clips, all you have to do is go on YouTube. You'll get into a vortex and put in Tonight Show Jim Fowler and laugh your butt off today. Next in the dish, James Cameron has congratulated the cast and crew of Avengers Endgame on surpassing Titanic in worldwide box office sales. Yeah. Because remember James, remember James was the director of Titanic. Now, now audience, this is nice, but it's a little James Cameron-ish. It's a little, it's nice with a little bit of snark and an attitude. This is what, look at this. Uh, I, an iceberg sank the real Titanic. It took the Avengers to sink my Titanic. Every here, everyone here at Lightstorm Entertainment salutes your amazing achievement. Endgame has earned $2.2 billion and is second only to James's other box office hit, Avatar, uh, which, has grossed, uh, which has grossed revenue of $2.7 billion. And we, we talked... Amazing. And again, we talked about Avatar a couple days ago. The movie came out 10 years ago and the sequel isn't even out yet. I mean... Like our the Minnetonka High School, they don't know what Avatar is. They, they came out <laughs> 20 years ago. I mean, yeah, so, like they have you guys seen? Uh, they don't know. They don't. They can't. They were like two when it came out. Yeah. Mom, did you see Avatar? I did see Avatar. Did you I like loved it? it. Did yeah. you? Very Kendall? different. Very. Yeah, yeah. Kendall, mm -hmm. did you like it? Duh, I love my blue people. I know you like the blue people. <laughs> what I, do you call it? Like you said, it, what what were you saying? It was similar to. Uh, it was like a Disney movie. Anyway, go oh, ahead. Yeah. I can't remember. See, and, and, and blue people for me, Smurfs. That's what right. Smurfs, yeah. Oh, that sure. was a little Papa Smurf and little yes. little Smurfette. The only woman in that village. You know, I felt bad, you know. There's only That's Smurfette something. and all of those men Smurf. Yeah. Still ahead. Why did we go down that route? I don't know. It's Friday. Still ahead, we're talking new music, including the new music video for A Whole New World, ahead of the release of the live-action Aladdin. My friends, we will be back right after these words. Back after this.
Minnetonka High School. That's right. Uh, next in the dish, the best known song from Aladdin, I, yeah, I think it is really, is getting a fresh take ahead of the movie's live action remake. Disney dropped this music video overnight featuring Zayn. And I want to make sure I'm pronouncing her right. Uh, Zavia, Zavia Ward, I think that's what? Xavier. Xavier, thank you. I knew, I knew the audience would know. Here's a whole new world. Listen to this. Kendall, what do you think? Ooh, I, I like, like that. This. Mm -hmm. I know. I I'm, like it. Mom, did you like that? I loved it. I got goosebumps. I know. The original was done by Peebo Bryson. And that uh, he, Zane has mm -hmm. that same, the, oh, someone owed for Peebo Bryson. I like that. <laughs> no, but uh, same tone, tone, mm -hmm. same range as, as Peebo. I was reading some early reviews of Aladdin. You know, I had, I'm going into Aladdin with tempered expectations. Okay. Because, you know, I, I, you know, Lion King, I'm, the live action Lion King, I'm sure is going to be great. This one I was unsure about, that first trailer with the Will Smith, the CG blue, it didn't look good. Yeah, thank you. But I, I'm, I feel better, but er, someone, there was a, a screening a couple days ago, and people said, and I wondered about this, they said, everything's great, it's better than you would expect, but Jafar isn't good. Yeah. You've been saying that since the beginning. I know. And that's my worry. You got to have mm -hmm. a good villain. And Jafar is, I don't want to Disney nerd out on y'all, but Jafar is one of the best Disney villains ever. Right. You got to get that right. You got it. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they're wrong. I'm hoping they're wrong. Next in the dish, I told you a lot of new music dropped yesterday or overnight. Justin Bieber and Ed Sheeran released their second collaboration. The new song is Ed's first in two years. And it's really, listen to the words to this. It's very, very sweet. It's about their wives. It's called, I Don't Care. Cause I don't care when I'm with my baby, yeah. All the bad things disappear. Are you making me feel like maybe I am somebody? I can deal with the bad nights when I'm with my baby, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I don't care as long as you just hold me near. I played it on the radio show. It's like the fifth time I've heard it. I really, I really like it. And I know what you're going to be doing for the rest of the year. Huh. Ooh, 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 that part, that little part. <laughs> yeah, because you do the. Girl, mm -hmm, you, you know do the, it. Do your Cardi B for me, please. Okay. There we go. Yes. The two worked on the 2015 hit "Lose uh, Love Yourself." Mom, did you like that song? Loved it. Yeah, I love Ed Sheeran. I do, and I love mm -hmm. Bieber. He used to drive me nuts, but now I like him again. Yeah. Still ahead, Stephanie Hansen is in the house, and if you haven't made plans for Mother's Day. I see you, procrastinators. She's going to give you some tips on where to take mom when we return. Back in a moment, everybody, on this beautiful Friday. Mother's Day is just a couple days away, and if you don't have reservations yet for brunch, time may be running out. But fear not, we do have, well, she does. She has alternatives. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 80s, she used Wesson for ton suntan oil. It's Stephanie Hansen, everybody. Get so it. true. We were, la we were laughing, in the, and I need a card, by the way. Can I get my card? We were laughing in the commercial break that Stephanie used baby oil for suntan oil. I yes. didn't know that people might. Oh, wait. Thank you, sweetie. With people, tin foil. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, my, I think Dar did that, too. Anyway, well, welcome. Hi. Okay, so these are last-minute alternatives, yeah, right? Yeah, if you're panicking that Mother's Day is coming and you don't have a plan, which, frankly, I didn't have a great plan. Yeah. These are ideas that you can still do. 
Okay, we're starting with Bachman's. Yeah, so inside the original Bachman's in Richfield is a place called Patrick's Bakery and Cafe. Okay. And it's in, oh, see, the audience loves it. It's inside where they have the plants, and it's kind of humid in there in a nice way, like very refreshing, relaxing. They have quiche, they have salads, they have baked goods. It's just a really nice place to spend the day, and then you can get your mom like a flower basket on your way out the door. I think I've seen it. Yeah, I just, it's, it's really quaint. It's very lovely. Okay, so Bachman's, last minute alternative. Sea salt. Okay, this is going to Minnehaha Park. You can rent the bike with the Surrey with the fringe on top and run the pedestrians over like they all do. Yeah. And then you can walk to the falls with your mom. Have you been run over by Oh, a, by... practically. Yeah, yeah. But sea salt is just a wonderful spot. It always has a line, but don't be afraid of the line. It goes really fast. And you can get wine or beer in another line. So that while you're waiting, you're talking to your neighbors in the line, you're drinking. It's just really a nice place. Great seafood, clam fries, which I know you like. I love clam, yeah. Delicious fish curries. Do you know, I've never been there. As oh, long as fantastic. I've lived here, I need to go to Sea Salt. It yeah. is fantastic. It's a whole experience and it's very fun. Next, uh, the Salty Tart. Okay, so this is... Yeah. Notice there's like a bakery theme here because you can always get into a bakery, right? The Salty Tart has, honestly, the most beautiful avocado toast I've ever seen in my whole life. Really? Oh, it is nice chunks of avocado, jammy eggs, the totally expertly laid out with chia seeds. It looks like a work of art. So you can go there with your mom, have a fancy vanilla uh, lavender latte, and then they're right outside the farmer's market for St. Paul, so you can go get some annuals or, again, a flowering plant. Can you tell I like flowers? Yeah, but no, but you're, what, you're, what you're creating is you're uh, like more than just coffee and some avocado, yes. you're creating a little afternoon. And just yeah. like some time together that you don't need to have a reservation and it can be more impromptu. Because right about now, when you're the expert, if you call right now, most places are gonna be booked for That's Sunday. That's right. Yeah. That's Sorry. right. Stephanie's not gonna. <laughs> no. So, Stephanie, Stephanie doesn't sugarcoat anything. Let well, me just try, yeah, yeah. Here's the not sugarcoating. The places that aren't booked, <laughs> Do you want to go there? I don't know. I love you so much. Uh, Minneapolis Cider Company. Okay, this is, if you're a mom, like you want to be on the cutting edge, this is a brand new cidery. It just opened, like literally this weekend is its grand opening. They've got hard ciders. They had a raspberry hard cider that I loved. It's pink, it's rosy, it's delicious. They have charcuterie platters, they have games, they have cards. So, you know, a lot of moms don't necessarily love to go like to the brewery because the beers can be kind of heavy, but ciders are very drinkable, very fresh. And the place inside all has mid-century modern furniture. It has leather bar seats. It's fancy. It's uh, I, nice in there. So if you have a cool mom, if you yeah. want to be on the cutting edge, I love and how like, I said, yeah. It's like, mom, this is the grand opening. Yeah. And they've got beautiful local cheeses on their charcuterie board and just, they have three ciders. They're just literally, I think Friday is their opening day today. So Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Minneapolis Cider. Let's talk about what if mom likes some barbecue stuff? Or like mom is meaty like me and wants like a full double IPA. Yeah. <laughs> you take that mom to Able Seed Brewing. Where did you find that voice? <laughs> that was good. Uh, you can go to Able Seed Brewing. And again, it's kind of an experience. So you get your beer, your local beer in your beer house, but then you go to Anamale's barbecue truck, oh, look which at is that. right outside. That looks delicious. The barbecue here is just fantastic. They've got tacos, they've got ribs, they've always got a beautiful chicken. Jerk chicken is one of my favorites. And it comes on a big platter. That's John Whiffley. Say hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Um, he looks very friendly. He's great. And then right next door to this is Minnesota Nice Cream, which is soft serve. They make their own chocolate yes. waffle cones. And they have like fruity pebbles and glitter. They'll make you like the most Instagrammable, beautiful ice cream cone for your mom, and it tastes good. I and had it's a, local. Yeah. Yeah. I had an affogato there, which is just the ice cream. I with don't even know what you said. Espresso okay, in a cup. Yeah. It's delicious. Finally, we have about 30 seconds. Oh. Alamo Draft House. Okay, if your mom is someone that likes a movie and uh, wants to eat too, the Alamo Draft House in Woodbury, it's, it's newer. Yeah. And you maybe not have been, and you can go see Avengers Endgame. But you can get like a warm chocolate chip cookie. You can have wine, beer, snacks. I and don't like to go to the movies without food. So this hits on all levels for me. Yeah, and they literally, they basically smack people across the forehead that talk. Yeah. That's what I love. They, I mean, they yeah. will, they will shame you. They're serious yeah. about they it. They are serious. They won't slap you, but I'm saying I love them. 
because they take that very seriously. Yes, I wish other movie theaters did. I did too. Really quick, we got to go, but I, I know you're here. You cover the food world. Um, isn't it great? I want to repeat it again. Ann Kim's yes. win. Uh, Ann Kim won a James Beard Award for Best Chef Midwest at the. Yeah. And I will say she won a personal award of mine for Best Speech Ever. Yeah, she did like a great her speech. speech. Going from uh, thinking something's possible, the immigrant story to really being such a success and a very nice woman. Yes, she is. Is she amazing. Is. Stephanie Hansen every day. Catch Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie Hansen. Catch Stephanie on the Weekly Dish. 9 to 11 on My Talk 1071 and head to Stephanie's website right there, stephaniesdish.com. Still ahead, everybody, we're chatting with a charity that is really near and dear to my heart. Pacer is here, how you can attend their benefit with special guest, the Beach Boys, when we come back. Back after this. <laughs> If you've spent any time with me uh, over the years, you know that bullying prevention is a cause close to my heart. I always end the show with a uh, with a kind of a kind of a saying uh, for everyone that's being bullied. And this weekend, you can support the effort and rock out to the Beach Boys at the same time at Pacer's annual benefit in Minneapolis. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my friend Jenna from Pacer. <laughs> Welcome back, Jenna. Hi. Can you tell? I, you're uh, anything for Pacer. You're always an easy yes for me. For people that aren't familiar, maybe watching in other cities, can you explain what the the, the goal of Pacer is? Sure. Pacer is a Minnesota nonprofit. We've been around for 40 years, and uh, when we started 40 years ago, the goal, our our mission, that was our mission then, still our mission today, is to advocate for children with disabilities and their families, and to improve. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and improve the educational outcomes for those kids. And it's evolved over the years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now, um, do you find? Let me. I, and I ask you this every time. And maybe this is a sad statistic. Do, are you finding that the that the 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 trouble with bullying has increased or decreased over the years? Let's let's say the last decade. Oh, the last decade. I would say. Um, you know, social media is getting bigger and bigger. And so, unfortunately, I think it's getting more pervasive. What's the biggest misconception? And it's, it's ironic, and I love it, that Minnetonka's here. What is the biggest, if there are parents watching, what's the biggest misconception, Jenna, about bullying? If you're a parent, what do you think is like, you can change their mind about? Uh, well, I think what we're really trying to do at Pacer is to change people's minds um, in that a lot of people think that bullying is just uh, a childhood rite of passage, something that every kid is going to experience, so it's not a big deal. But it is a, it's a huge deal. Huge deal. Huge deal. And so we want parents to think that, no, bullying doesn't happen, have to happen to all kids. No, my, le like my least favorite uh, saying, one of them, boys will be boys. That's, right. not, that's no. not the way it's... it's no. and, there's a, and, and there's a big difference. You know, uh, I, I also hate when people overuse the word bullying and right. misuse it. Because right. I think it takes attention. Do you not? I think it I takes agree. attention from true bullying. Bullying and conflict are two different things. Yes. Conflict. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tell us. Uh, tell us about the event. Well, you know, Mother's Day. So maybe your mom is a big fan of the Beach Boys, yeah. right? Yeah. So tomorrow at the Minneapolis Convention Center, we're having our annual benefit, which really helps us raise money for our various projects. So it's really, really important to Pacer. And so it starts tomorrow at 6 p.m. with a silent auction. Then we have a live auction with amazing prizes. Um, we have the ultimate sports package for Minnesota um, male professional sports. We have um, Chef Gavin Kaysen. He is from yeah. Spoon and Stable, yeah. Yeah. Demi. So he will be auctioning off a uh, private dinner at his parents' home. So oh. you'll get to interact with well, him. Well, Gavin, that's a nice yeah. little thing, yeah. And then we'll round out the evening with an amazing performance by the Beach Boys. The Beach Boys, that is a good night. And people, yeah. Jenna, people can still get tickets, right? Yes, so tickets are available on our website today until 1 p.m. So you can go to pacer.org and buy those tickets. Otherwise, if you decide tomorrow, hey, why not? Uh, you can buy them at the event starting at 5.30. And if people are unable to go uh, this weekend, but they still, something clicked in our little interview here, and they're mm -hmm. like, you know what, I want to support. Okay, how do they, do they just go to your website if they need help yes. and or support? Yes. So our website, we have resources for, for you know, everything that we talked about today. Yeah. 
Um, and parents then, and kids. Parents and kids. Um, and then we also, you can donate on our website, pacer.org. Absolutely. Give it up for Jenna, everybody. Pacer's <laughs> annual benefit featuring the Beach Boys is tomorrow at the Minneapolis Convention Center. For ticket information, it's right at the bottom of your screen. Head to pacer.org, and we'll put this whole segment on Facebook a little bit later if you missed it. Coming up next, we're playing a Mother's Day game with Kendall and her mom, and me and my mom when we come back. Back after this. Thank you, Jenna. joined again by Kendall and her mom, Sid, and we're celebrating moms today, as we always do on the Friday before Mother's Day, because Mother's Day is on Sunday. Uh, Kendall's mom isn't the only one joining us. Live from Louisiana, everybody, it's my mom, Dar. Hello, mom. Hi, honey. Hi, everyone. How you doing, mom? I'm doing good. Mom, now you've never, you've never met Kendall, so to speak. Say hi to Kendall. Hi, Kendall. Hi, Dar. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so mom, we're going to play a little game, and we're going to play a game to see how well our moms know us. For, uh, so we have questions, newlywed game ask questions uh, about us from our childhood. And we call oh, it, Lord. I know, we call it Mom Knows Best. Now, Kendall is going to ask you the questions. And then, um, and then I am going, and then I'm going to ask Sid questions. So, Kendall, you go first. Okay, Dar, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. What did Jason do that got him grounded for the first time? <laughs> okay, he uh, decided to spray paint a not so good word on our white garage door. Oh. Jason, is she right? Spray painted a swear word on the door. I spray painted, yes. We got it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> mom, do you re mom remember that you just bought the house? Yes. Oh, I do remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was oh grounded for a very long time, <laughs> and it was the S word, and I spray painted it with red spray paint all over. Yeah. Teenage oh. angst. I know. I know. My goodness. Okay. okay, Dar. Let's see if you can go two for two. What was the reason you had to pick up Jason early from school after a call from the principal? Oh. Uh. Oh, <laughs> he, he had talked his aunt into giving him a perm. <laughs> and he ended up with all his curly hair and went to school and got made fun of, so he had to come home. Oh, I know. Oh. Is it true? I was made fun of after getting a perm. Yeah. Ah, She's right, yes. yeah. I, I got a perm, and my mom kept warning me. She goes, you, you are going to get made fun of, and you are going to hate it, and then you're going to have to get it relaxed. And then Aunt Char's gonna have to do it again. And then I wanted it. I wouldn't leave her alone. She was mm -hmm. fine. You're gonna suffer the consequences. And I got there, and they oh, were calling honey. me Little Orphan Jason. Oh. They were, you know, for Little Orphan Annie, because oh, I, yeah. I had little tight curls. People were asking me where my daddy Warbucks was, and it was bad. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. We have one more question, Mom. Oh, nope. Okay. That's all I that's got. It? That's it? <laughs> that's all I got. Oh, there's just two. Okay. Two. So, two. Mom, you did well, Mom. Good job, you did good. Wow. Okay. Stand by, Mom. Stand by. Okay, okay uh, let's go to Sid. Sid, where was Kendall's first kiss? Oh. Swing set. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I was on a swing in someone's backyard. I don't remember who oh, it was. Mom, but... No, it was on a swimming pole. Oh. It was not your first kiss. Oh. I think it was. In huddles? No, it was before that. She forgot. <laughs> I remembered. Is your mom <laughs> right? You're probably right, but I mean. But that was very, that was epic right there, too. Oh. Epic, y'all. Yeah. Why, why was it? Well, she was not supposed to be doing what she was doing. Oh. Really. <laughs> okay. In a oh. pool with a boy. Hey, Kendall, you want me to go to question yep, two real quick? Let's, okay. Let's, let's, uh, Mama Sid, like what, job, Mama. what did Kendall do before the required mile run in grade school? Oh, poor Kendall. She well, in grade school, she one time on the way to the required mile run, she threw up on the bus. <laughs> did she throw up on the bus? You threw up on the bus. She did. I 
I was so stressed oh, out. She was so stressed oh. out. I was super, super oh. competitive, and See, I wanted to beat she all was the boys. And totally I was like, into it. See, that's why I didn't do athletics. That's why I don't yeah. want to throw up on a bus. Throw up on the bus. That's good. You probably still beat the boys, though. You could probably, yeah, you probably yeah. would. Give it up for Sid, everybody. <laughs> now, Thank you. Hey, Mom. What? Hey, Mom, before we let you go, I know we're seeing on the news Houston has a ton of rain. My mom's in Lake oh, Charles. Yes. My mom's in Lake Charles, Louisiana. How are you guys doing? We're, we're getting flooded, and it's going to continue till tomorrow or possibly Sunday. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, I'll check on you later. I love you, Mom. Thank you for I being. Love you too. Literally, thank you for being. I, I was blessed when I was given to you. So thank you, Mom, for being the best mom ever. All right, honey. Thank you so much. I love you. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. There's my mom. Bye, the Dar. Oh, I literally, my mom is just, she is, I know you feel the same way. My mom is just, I had a young, just like sit, my mom was young. My mom mm -hmm. is young. So I had the cool mom, but she mm -hmm. was like, but she won't mess around because she could look at me with those eyes. And the worst thing she could ever say to me was, I'm disappointed in you. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. killed me. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness, I don't think she is lately. Anyway, uh, we'll be right back, everybody. Back in a moment to wrap things up. Hopefully. And then please, let's just discuss. Yeah, the mango. Mango, mango I mean, character. come on. Come now, on, everybody. Uh, how did, how, who inspired mango uh, Mango? Mango was based on uh, uh, two things. One of them was uh, a girlfriend. Uh, she was from Russia. And uh, when she got mad, uh, she would say, Katan, I kill you. <laughs> like that. So you know where this is coming already. <laughs> yeah. And then the other character it was based on was my dog, who was a Dalmatian. And she would do this kind of come hither look. She would like, like if she was looking away yeah. and I was behind her, I don't know what camera to use for yeah. this, but uh, she'd be like, just call out Lola. Her name is Lola. Got you, ready? Okay. Lola? Lo 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 Lola? <laughs> Chris Catan on Valve last night. He's out promoting his new book. And uh, Chris, was, Chris visited us last year. He was a great guest. Talked about his years on SNL and uh, his accident, because you know he has, he has back problems now. And he was just such a good guest. Another one, I always talk about people coming to play. He came to play that day. Kendall joins me again with Mama Sid. Now, uh, I said this at the top of the show. This was a good day from New Music. And uh, they are one of my favorite, not only local bands. They're not going to be local for long, mark my word. But they uh, are one of my favorite guests ever on the Jason Show in Four Seasons. Yam House is out with a new song. It's called Mama. And listen to the words because Lars wrote it for his mom. Listen. I'm just trying to find my place I'm looking for your sweet embrace Cause nothing ever feels the same You always listen to my mixtapes Back when I was in the 10th grade You always paid attention when I would play it again Play it again, you are That's a good song It goes on, it just talks about how his mom always supported him and it's just a beautiful I call it kind of like a story song you can find Yam House on at Spotify Apple wherever you get your, your music go support them they're great I mean it's just like positive pop and and you know we we may be uh, eventually uh, I can't say anything but we might be working with them on something that's all I'm gonna say just a little something, something. Some, something might be in the works I don't know just you'll you'll see mm -hmm. maybe around September that's all mm -hmm. I'll say but yeah maybe maybe, maybe. maybe. anyway so, Mom, did you have, we have about a minute, did you have a good time? I had a great time. Is this not, Thank were you. you nervous at all? I was a little at first, and yeah. then I thought, well. It's easy. It's just <laughs> TV. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's just <laughs> TV, yeah. So, what's, what are you doing for Mother's Day now? What do you? Well, we are one of the groups that didn't have a reservation. <laughs> yeah. And so, in Red Wing, we Sorry. have like two restaurants, so. We are going to one of our favorite spots, actually. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're going to sit on the patio, wine. and we're going to drink a lot. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of wine. wine. Lead with that, Mom. Yeah. That would, Lead we'll with that. We'll start that actually today after the show. Perfect. Then, That's right, yeah. Right through the I weekend. Know. I told the audience, <laughs> this audience has been so good, and, and Aaron Schwab, who handles our audience, who's also a mom, happy Mother's Day, Mom, 
or Aaron. Uh, Aaron. Aaron goes, Aaron tells the audience, okay, this is the last segment. And the audience goes, oh. So I invited the entire audience to my house after the show. Yeah. So we're all going, that's right. We're going. Okay, it out. <laughs> now, I forgot to tell Colin, but that's fine. I mean, yeah. you'll, you know. He'll be fine. That's fine. fine. We'll, go, we'll, we'll all go up to the cabin. Monday on the show, everybody, it's Bloody Mary times with Burger Moe's. That's right. And we're showing you. Now, Kendall set this up, or no, our executive producer, Jeff, I thought he was trying to kill me. How I did at glass blowing with ovens that were like at a thousand degrees. You'll see that on Monday. But right now, again, happy Mother's Day to all of you moms watching. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. And if you are watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks to Minnetonka High School. We'll see you tomorrow or Monday, everybody. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy said. <laughs>